Never, ever, ever give your workout for free. Hey, zine machines. Zine lovers. Can I call you guys zine machines? I feel like every YouTube channel has a thing that they call their viewers and their supporters, and I really like zine machines. I think that sounds really cute. Welcome to my second vlog. I haven't made a vlog in a very long time just because I'm really bad at filming my process of things or filming my day to day, even though I am a content creator. I'm, I'm much better equipped for the scripted tutorial kind of videos because I'm just nerdy. I like to prepare, so vlogs are very freestyle-ish. I'm doing a day in the life. My goal today was to complete 100 zine kits and I didn't do it all in one day. I've been working on this literally the entire month of January. I was planning all the stuff that was going to go in the zine kit, getting all of that prepared, and then the past few days I've been compiling and making the zine kits. So I'll show you a little bit of that. I took my glasses off because there was a glare on it. It's just the constant struggle of having a glare from the ring light in your glasses when you're watching someone's video. How do people do it? How do people with glasses be in the ring light? I don't know. There, there might be a way to do it. I just, I can't. So I took my glasses off. But anyway, the vlog is going to be me making 100 zine kits. And also you'll meet my sister because she's going to help me take some product photos of it. And then we're just going to go out to eat and enjoy the day. Hopefully you guys enjoy this vlog. I'll see you in the clips. Okay, so here are how the zine kits look when they're finished. I put the stickers on it. I made everything by hand and I kind of messed up because I didn't realize that when I ordered a hundred of these boxes they were going to come flat. So I ended up having to assemble all of them which I know everybody probably knows that but I just I didn't. So here I am assembling all the boxes. Um, I did the math and it took about a minute and a half per box and I have a hundred boxes, so this took me about two and a half hours, maybe three hours. I'm not sure. I just put on the office in the background and just went to town folding them all. So after I was done completing all of the box assembly, I had to print out the stickers that I designed to go on the top of the box, and then I had to assemble all the stuff that goes inside. So I have a couple of zine templates, some zine instructions, I have some resources, crayons, glue, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it, but you guys will see. Once I finished assembling all of the stuff that goes inside, I just made a little assembly line so it's easier for me to put everything together.
What I like to do is, since I'm making 100 zine kits, I just start by putting down 100 of the sticker sheets that go inside. So once I have 100 of them down, it's just easier for me to add all the other stuff that goes inside. I don't have to count 100 of everything. I just see the stickers that need matching with the zine templates, the washi tape, the glue, the scissors, and I just stack it on top. I hope that makes sense, but once I put 100 of the base down, I'm able to add all the other stuff too. Now I want to show you how a finished mini zine kit looks and like I said I created this all by hand. I had to assemble all the boxes, I designed the sticker that goes on the top, and then all of the stuff inside I sourced or made it myself. The zine kit includes some crayons, glue for gluing stuff together on the inside, some scissors, every kit comes with a roll of washi tape, and I also found these cute conversation heart stickers and they're puffy so they feel really cool and I thought that would be cool to add to the zine kits and I put about five or six in each of them. And then the stuff that took me a long time to create pretty much all of January were all of these zines. So this one is a zine instructional zine, a mini zine instruction, <laughs> how to make a mini zine. And then here is a template I put together. I just like the design of the scissors on the front cover and back cover, but the inside is blank. And then here's another zine template that I made and it's called I Heart Blank, a mini zine of things I love. And this one you just fill out yourself. There's nothing on the inside. So you just make a zine about anything that you love. The last zine that's included is just a blank zine. So no one has to go and fold it themselves, but I did include the instructions in case you wanted to do that. Then I include some love themed scrap paper. I just sourced these from either I had it on hand or I just bought a bunch of junk paper, like ju junk journal paper and put it together in the zine kits. This here is a zine resource page. So if you scan the little cupie's belly, it leads you to all of my personal zine resources. And on the back, I put some zine prompts to help get you started with your zine. And then of course, every zine kit comes with stickers. They all have a heart sticker sheet and then some fruit stickers because I don't know why when I think about Valentine's Day, I always think about fruit. So I thought that would be a cute addition to add to all of the kits. Now that I'm finished with all of the zine kits, it's time for me to take some product photos. So now since Kalei, this is my sister Kalei by the way, I don't know if I introduced her. 
Say hello to my vlog. Say <laughs> she's, she's making her own <laughs> vlog, but I, I'm paying her since she helped me with the picnic photo shoot thing. I'm paying her in boba. So we're about to go get a boba. Yeah, boba. What do you have to say? Boba. <laughs> <laughs> Show the people what you're getting. Okay. Show them the, I want the same thing, but no boba. Brand, but make the boring. That's what they look like. That's what they look like on feet. And you have to shake it 17 times. I already shook mine 17 times. Y'all saw. Y'all saw. Y'all saw. Y'all know the vibes. Y'all like my ring? It's, is it's it a penny? A, it's a little penny. Where's the key? Where's the top? It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. Oh my god. Strawberry Frosty. Right, strawberry and Frosty. Oh, is that why they call it Strawberry Frosty? Yeah. Oh. A lot of people don't know that. But yeah, I Strawberry and Frosty. Today's a strawberry day, I guess, because I'm craving sh chocolate covered strawberries. Mm -hmm. That's where we're about to go next. We're going to go find some chocolate covered strawberries. This is so good. It's like making you're my. Like, it's you're my like freaking out. You can't think. <laughs> <laughs> We tried to get chocolate covered strawberries over at Shoreline Village, but the parking was insane. So now we're at, where are we? She's bored. Chocolate Bash. We're going to Chocolate Bash, so hopefully they're good. We're gonna get these and maybe some lunch. I'm not sure. Hopefully. I'm pretty hungry, it's four, so, so hopefully yeah. Hopefully it's like dinner-ish. It's time to eat dinner time, I guess, but yeah. yeah. Chocolate strawberries! Strawberries. They're so big. I love when I'm craving something and then I get exactly that thing and it's good. There's so many times where you crave something, you finally buy it and then it's kind of gross and you're like, oh. It looks so much. <laughs> you laughing, girl? At least I still look good in my crooks. Boots are made for cooking. That's what I'll do. Tasting like cow, like I taste the the roaming. I taste the roaming of the cow. <laughs> it tastes like biting you know, straight into the cow. You know, like back in the day, before refrigerators, when they used to like salt the meat so it stayed <laughs> good to eat. We read Little House on the Prairie. Mm -hmm. They had to like cut their meat and store it in like salt jug. That's what it tastes. It tastes like hunted meat. Cause I was gonna say it tastes like, but I was like, like not. What? Like what? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> we'll spell it out on the screen. <laughs> We're gonna spell it out right here when she said it tastes like. <laughs> I know because I, I feel bad because the lady that gave it to us is literally right behind us. I know she didn't cook the food. I know she probably just works there, but still, it feels a little rude to to give my honest opinion about it. It wasn't good though. Oh my god, I feel like Keith Lee. I wouldn't come back, but I'm not saying that you shouldn't come here. <laughs> yeah, Keith Lee. You know what was good though from this place? Your drink. This drank. 
This drink is good. It's just beer. Oh, my favorite. <laughs> That's like one of those moments where you just have to sit in silence. Like, you did that, you know? I did that. I chose that. I was excited for it. But who's mm -hmm. not excited for Mexican food or street tacos, you know? Right. It's we like one know. of those things where you just donate money to that brand. Yep. Just wow. donated $30 to them. And honestly, that's another thing, too. Why were two street tacos, some rice and beans, $30? And my beer and your drink, but still. We should have went to uh, Coco Reno's. Coco Reno's is pretty good. We can go to Elsa. Sure, went there because it's open, isn't it? Yeah, but I'm going on Tuesday, so. so? I mean, yeah, yeah you're right. Today. <laughs> or <laughs> even the, the taco truck on Ocean and Pine. Girl! Well, we're in this area for the chocolate covered strawberries, oh, so yeah, that's why we ate there. We actually have good taste. It's yeah. been scientifically proven that we. It's like great taste, yeah. yeah. Not even good, I would say great. Great, Excellent. amazing. Subpar. Yeah. Or no. <laughs> 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 And then, I don't know, it turned kind of into just like a day off. Like I was supposed to just buy my sister boba and pay her in the boba, but then we ended up going out for strawberries and then we had lunch. I don't know, now I'm just really tired. It's it's still pretty early. So it was kind of a busy day and the zine kits have really been on my mind pretty much all month, actually all of January. So now that they're finally done, I'm like, wow, I have so much more free time that I can focus on content or my shop or stuff in my zine club. So I'm, I'm really like, wow, I have a lot of time free to just kind Kind of hang out we even got the photo shoot done today which it was very simple we just took pictures on my iphone nothing crazy so i don't really have to worry about getting a bunch of product shots and everything i did all of that today and if you guys want to get one of these zine kits i only made 100 and i think 50 are going to be brought to my in-person events this month and the other 50 will be on my shop so that leaves only 50 to buy in the shop so unless you see me in person then you can purchase it from me in person but this one is specialty it's limited so i'm never going to make these again <laughs> so the original zine kit that I have in my shop that I've had in my shop for a couple of years now that one is just a basic beginners first time making a zine starter kit and it comes with stuff to make midi zines and folio zines which are the bigger size zines and it teaches you everything it comes with zine examples it comes with magazine clipping scissors glue literally everything you need to make a zine but the themed ones are actually really exciting it was really fun to do a valentine's day day themed one so this took me weeks to accomplish. So it feels really good that it's it's wrapped up now. Yeah, I'm excited. I also wanted to talk about something else because I get this question a lot about my business. People will ask me, Brie, how do you get over the guilt of selling your art or selling your zines? And you guys, I don't feel guilty for selling my art or selling my zines. I mean, I definitely used to, so I could definitely relate to what you mean about like, how do I price my work in a way that I get over the fact that I have to price my work, that I have to somehow be this, this business person now that I want to sell my artwork you guys i think when you price your work for what it's worth it helps artists everywhere not just you it's helping artists everywhere because so many people undervalue artists work and our services and our time and our energy for example like these zine kits right easily i can price them at a price that makes my money back so all the money that i spent on making one zine kit i can just double that so i pay myself back and that's it but that's not how i price my stuff the, this is going to be priced based on yes all the products that are inside and all of the stuff that I all the money I paid to make one zine kit I'll add that price in so I make my money back but also my time and energy is very valuable to me and if people buy this they're buying it from me because they want my perspective on zine making they want my you know style my my eye like the things that I've sourced so I've learned to really value myself and value my work and I price it accordingly and I don't really feel guilty because I also provide a lot of value for for people because this is what I love to do I love zine making so no one, I'm not saying that you have to buy these kits. I'm not saying the only way you can learn how to make zine making is if you pay me. I provide so much stuff for free just because I love to do that. Like I said, this kit is like... I mean, I keep saying the kit because it's the theme of this video, but anything in my shop, you don't have to buy that to make zines or support me. And also I'm not a zine business, I'm an artist. I'm, an, I'm a freelance artist with my own art shop and I happen to sell zines in there too because that's my main focus. That's what I'm more obsessed with. But I learned very early on in my zine journey that zines were not gonna make me a lot of money, nor should they. So I had to incorporate my art into other things and broaden my services that I offer and use 
use my skills in other ways to make money. Zines are not my bread and butter. That's what I'm obsessed with. And that's why I make YouTube videos about it. That's why I post on Instagram about zines. That's why I like do zine readings, zine workshops, and make these kids, you know, because I really love zine making. But I make most of my money from like offering my services for commissions, doing stuff for brands. I do lectures, which I get paid for. I do events on the side, you know, like the craft fairs and stuff. There's a lot of ways to make money, guys. And if you're coming into zine making because you want to get rich off zines, this probably isn't the right medium for you. You know, I just want to be really transparent that I don't make all of my income from zines. I make very little money from my zines, you guys. Like a lot of the stuff that sells is usually like the t-shirts, the totes, and my other services like commissions. Commissions are pretty big, you know, because usually you're working on a project for someone and it takes a lot of time and energy and a lot of people or businesses or brands are willing to pay for that. So I've learned to be able to do the nitty gritty stuff. Like doing commissions to me is like when I used to do a nine to five. It's not that fun. It's really, it's like the, the least enjoyable part of my job, but that's what I do because I want to be able to do stuff like this, like make the zine kits and make content and stuff that's low paying. I hope one day my YouTube blows up and then I'll be able to make money from it. So then I could provide more value in my zine making. That'd be awesome. But I just wanted to touch on that. Like, don't feel guilty for selling your art. Don't rip people off either, but definitely value yourself, value your art, and then price it accordingly because it really helps people take you seriously. And if you want to be taken seriously as an artist and you want to do this for a job, you're going to have to get over the fact that you have to sell your stuff. But I'm not gonna sit here and act like I'm some saint. Like I'm this person that just knows how to get over that kind of stuff because I suffered with that too. I felt so guilty for pricing my work or I would give out my stuff for free because I just wanted people to read them. Like specifically the zines. I remember back in 2017, I did my, or it was 2016, I can't remember. I did my very first zine fest. It was called the Long Beach Zine Fest and I was giving out my zines for free. I don't, there were mini zines, big zines, whatever. I was giving literally everything away for free because in my mind, I was like, I just want people to read it. But also somewhere deep down, some part of me that wasn't admitting it, I didn't think people would buy it. One of my professors, cause I went to college for English creative writing. And at that time when I was at that zine fest, I was in my undergrad studies and my professor, Professor Guffey, Robert Guffey, life-changing professor. He really helped me in learning this lesson about putting a price on your work and valuing your work. He came up to my booth and was literally mad at me. He's like, why are you giving out all your stuff for free? And I was like, I just want people to read it. And he didn't say anything. He just grabbed one of everything and was like, I'll see you in class on Monday. Go to class on Monday. And before class starts, he starts taking out all the zines that he got from the zine fest, from Long Beach Zine Fest. And he's talking to the class, showing us all the zines that he got. He's showing my zines, but he's not telling the class that they're mine. And then after he's showing us all of the zines, he asks us like, what do you think each zine is worth? What do you think each zine costs? He showed some Disneyland themed zines and people were like, oh, those are probably like 10 bucks. He showed another zine about someone raiding food in their area. And somebody was like, yeah, that's probably $5. Then he showed my zines and people were like, oh, easily $10. Like all the effort and time and energy that went into that, that's probably at least $10. And I'm sitting there like mind blown. I'm like, people would have bought that? And so he, he doesn't rat me out or anything, but he's like, I saw a few people there that were giving out their zines for free. And some of these zines that I'm holding that you guys priced was actually given to me for free. And everybody in the class was like, which one? Because all of those zines are worth money. Like I would totally buy those zines. And he didn't say which ones, but he was just like, this is just a reminder for you folks. You guys are English creative writing majors. You guys want to make a living from your artwork or, you know, your writing. You want to make a living doing this. So price yourself accordingly. Take yourself seriously. And when you take your work seriously, other people will too. He also said, never, ever, ever give your work out for free. I don't care if you charge 25 cents for it, charge something, value it. And that taught me a lesson. I never <laughs> did that again because the, the lesson I took from it was like, don't sell yourself short, give yourself a chance. And ever since I did that, you know, this is what I do now. This is my job. I do art for a living. So if you want to do art for a living, think about that. I, I always tell you guys, you don't have to do this. I'm not saying like in order to be a, a real artist, you have to be a full-time artist. That's just what I do. And I just share my life. If all of this goes away tomorrow and suddenly I stop making sales or suddenly people stop watching my videos and I get demonetized on my platforms. Am I above getting a job? Like having to work at Target again or FedEx again? No, I would totally do that. I would do that now. Like if I wasn't making enough money to be able to pay my bills and things got a little sticky or I had an emergency, literally all I need is one medical emergency and my savings are probably gone. <laughs> would I be above getting a job to be able to pay a bill? No. So I don't want you guys to look at me and see what I do and think like the only way I'm a real artist is if I do it for full-time like Brie. 
No, I'm literally also a victim of capitalism. And if things, if shit hits the fan, I'll get a job too. There's other ways to make money. I guess that's all I'm saying is there's other ways to make money. If you feel that guilty about making money from your artwork, don't sell it then. Just don't. I don't know. Maybe that was bad advice. Was, <laughs> was that even good advice? I don't know. But that's just what I do. You know, like I never push myself as some YouTuber that's like, hey, this is how you should be a full-time artist and this is what you should do. Like, no, I'm just sharing my life. And if you like the view of my life, thank you. I just love sharing what I know and sharing what I do. I'm not a walking tutorial. I'm not a walking resource, you know? If you learn things from me and there's something here that you can borrow or there's a way I do something that you can implement into your work, great, that's what I want. That's what I want. Because honestly, my dream has always been to be a teacher. Being able to do stuff like this and post content online and make even the zine kits and teach you guys how to make zines the way that I know how to do it. I'm living my dream. I'm happy with that. So yeah, just a little small biz advice. I'm not really, I hate even talking about the business aspect of it because I don't think I'm a good businesswoman. I really, I really don't because honestly, me making a hundred zine kits for Valentine's Day, there wasn't even a demand for it. I just had the idea and I wanted to do it. I bought a hundred of these boxes because it was a better deal to get a hundred boxes than to get like 50. So that's why I made 100 zine kits. That's probably a bad business move. I don't know. Like, because who's to say 100 people want to make zines like this? Who says that 100 people want to make Valentine's Day zines? You know, I just took a chance. I took a risk. I did something that was fulfilling to me. I think that if you're going to get into this business, you have to really be authentic. Just do what you want to do. That's probably really bad advice too, because you should be business savvy. And I'm not going to act like I'm I'm not in some ways business savvy. Like I, I, I know a little bit of things, but for the most part, I just try to do what makes me happy. And I think that rubs off on people. And I think people want to support people that are trying to live in their purpose and, and just trying to have fun. So hopefully that helps. I'm not I'm not the best business advice giver, but I did want to say that because I see a lot of comments that's asking me for business advice. And guys, just you'll never know until you try. So if you want to do this, just try. Just try. Maybe take a business class. Maybe take a class on how to finance everything for yourself. And then just go forth with your ideas because you, you shouldn't be trying to copy anybody else. You know, you shouldn't be looking for a copy and paste guide on how to run your business because you want to come up with original ideas like what's going to set your business apart what's going to set your art apart you know that's what I do I just think like when I had this idea to make these kits it was just a, a, an idea I thought would be fun because that's something I want to do and when I looked up Valentine's Day theme kits they didn't exist so I, I was like I'm going to make one for myself but I'm also going to make some to share with other people because maybe they'll like it and I get to share what I love about zines in my own way I get to make something that I want to see out in the world and I think that's what art is about. It's about not only making things, but sharing them. That's the advice I would give. I, I hope it's helpful. I just be talking sometimes. So that is it. I will probably now have to clean my room. I made quite the mess with all the zine kits and everything. This is, uh, what they look like over in the corner. If you buy one, they're coming straight from my room in uh, Long Beach, California. I gotta go. I gotta clean my room now. 